All right, welcome back, Bears fans. Excited to be here with you again. This is becoming my favorite series. I know these aren't the most popular videos out there, and granted, I'm fairly a new channel, so a lot of people haven't picked up yet. Maybe these will get popular as we go along, but these to me are the funnest thing we do because it analyzes the team now and it really breaks down where we're going headed forward in the future. And to me, this is a huge need for the Bears but one that we can't really address too hard this season. So it's going to be one of the harder ones to watch and one of those where you cross your fingers, knock on wood, and you hope and pray. Because right now this isn't the best position for the Bears, but there's also so many other things we need and we have two young rookies, well, rookies last year, second-year players that need an opportunity to prove themselves this year. So we'll get into that. But this is the defensive interior, the defensive tackles on the Bears breakdown. All right, as we always do, let's start off with our defensive uh, overview, where the team stands on defense as we play, lay the play out out. Man, struggling today as we lay the lineup out. Uh, we've got both the nickel and the base defense. That's why there's more than 11 guys out there, but that gives you a whole view of all of our starters. Today we're focusing right there on the middle and on the front, and you can see we've got a little issue right there with Justin Jones. He is a free agent. And although some people are calling for him to be re-signed on a cheap deal, I don't see it happening, and here is why. Well, first, let's go over the contracts we have right now. We've got two young rookies, which is very convenient and very nice if they work out. Andrew Billings was a great signing. That was a very, very positive, good signing by Poles. He is making great deals, and I'm very impressed with him as a GM. So uh, nothing more to go for there. Michael Dunford, Bill Murray, they're nothing. I'm, they're not nothing. They're They're... Roster signings, they can help on the 90-man, but I really don't see them being impactful players on this team. I don't, so I'm not going to focus on them very much at all. This is what we want to look at is, this is the meat and potatoes, what we always get into. This is our players that we currently have on the roster or that we had last year and some of the key stats that I look at. On the far right, you're going to see their PFF ranking, 107th out of 130, 42nd out of 130, 101st out of 130, 84th out of 130. But the two things I want to point out at the very bottom, Gervon Dexter and Zach Pickens, is they did improve significantly as the year went along. And there's something interesting that I found as I was doing some digging on them. And I'm going to give it to you right now about the breakdowns of their snaps. Ryan Poles is no dummy. Look at Gervon Dexter's missed tackle percentage. It's pretty high. Justin Jones is really high too, which is one of the big reasons I don't see him coming back. None of these stats for these guys... Uh, on our team right now are blowing your socks off. None of them make you say, oh, I'm really glad we have them. The one thing that looks really nice as a rookie is Gervon Dexter at 10.24 on his sack hit hurry ratio. So that means one out of every 10 plays, he's getting a sack hit or hurry. And that's very positive for a rookie, extremely positive. Now, I know when I show Jalen Carter stats, a lot of you are going to say, we should have taken Jalen Carter. I don't disagree with you, but I also understand that how pitifully horrible things are on the offensive line and last year with what Jalen Carter had coming out it wasn't the right approach for us to take to take that risk with everything he had going on I mean all the stories about him lying to the police covering things up that wasn't the approach of where we need things right now in a rebuild so I respect Ryan Poles and what he made in that decision Jalen Carter has turned out to be a phenomenal athlete. We, you know, you knew the potential was there and you knew that he could do it. Was the distraction going to get in the way? Well, apparently it didn't en enough because he ended up being the fifth rated overall defensive interior out of everyone, not just rookies. He was the top rated rookie, but it was fifth overall out of everyone. So yes, that one would have been nice to have on the Bears, but there is some positive here. Gervon Dexter with a 10.24 sack hit hurry. That's really positive. His missed tackle percentage, 20%. Zach Pickens' missed tackle percent was the lowest, 14.3. And that's you want to still be a little better, but for a rookie, that's actually phenomenal. What's interesting is how Poles played them. So Gervon Dexter was in on 297 passing plays and 134 rushing plays. Zach Pickens was in on 115 rushing plays and 148 passing plays. In the NFL, teams typically run close to a 60-40. So there's a lot more passes than runs. Gervon Dexter was in a significantly amount more of passing plays, so not as many missed tackle opportunities, and more of his sack hit hurries that he can get to. And Zach Pickens, whose sack hit hurry was all the way up at 18, which is not, not phenomenal. I mean, it's something you can work on. 
And there's a lot of good that can be seen with Eric Washington signing because he's going to work with these two young guys and possibly one other guy we bring in. So we're going to go over that too. But Eric Washington's a phenomenal signing for excitement on this point right here. And I do think that had a major impact on why they did hire him. This is a major focus we need right here. So, again, Zach Pickens on 148 pass plays and 115 run plays, that's that's more than the league average of run plays. So they knew what they were doing. And, and, and that's Eberflus, too. I'm not just going to give credit to that for polls. That's, I mean, polls helped draft these guys, but Eberflus played them appropriately to hit their strengths. So, anyways, check that out. I'm focusing too much on this point right here. Let's go and look at here's your top five in the league where you want your guys to be at. And you can see some things can be forgiven. Derek Brown, fourth in the league, his sack hit hurry is a little high. You can see a very significant trend there by the top guys in the league with their sack hit hurries. They are disruptors. They get in and they they put pressure on the quarterback, but they also plug the holes. See all their run defense on the fifth column over? Their run defense is all very high. Uh, but right there, Derek Brown, he's kind of the anomaly. But then look at his missed tackle percentage. It's non-existent. He doesn't miss tackle. I mean, he's a, he's a stone wall, so nothing's getting through him. So there's your top guys in the league. That's what you want to see your numbers up at. Obviously, not every team's going to have a top guy in the league, and they're still going to have a solid defensive front. So it'd be nice to get that sack hit hurry right around where Gervon Dexter is for everybody. 10 is a really solid number, and for a rookie to do that, that gives me a lot of hope for Gervon Dexter moving forward. And that's why I think he's going to get some significant playing time but her, hopefully Washington can help get that missed tackle percentage way down because that does need to come significantly down. You see his run defense is a 36.2 grade. So he's got some work to do, but he's also only a second-year player, so there's a lot of positive there. You can pause this if you want to look at some of those stats, but that's kind of what we look at. So free agency, this is what I always like to do. Go over free agency and the draft, and this is what, if I do... I don't know what the Bears are going to do on this one. I have my strong opinions about things, but here's one where the Bears could go multiple ways, and I can see Poles doing something like this, taking one of these free agents that are a low-impact signing, not very expensive, somewhere around $5 million on a one-year prove-it deal, and getting them to come in and having Washington, Eric Washington, work with them to see if we can pull something out of them because both of these guys are huge upside potential. Javon Kinlaw was a first-round pick. hasn't really pulled out the numbers. His missed tackle percentage is phenomenal. He just he doesn't hit his assignments, and there's a lot of – he might not miss the tackles. See the zero missed tackles? But that's because he's out of position, and teams get away with a bunch against him. So that's why his grades are so low. But there's a ton of potential there. big size body and a, a very good athlete. And I think Washington could work with him. Eric, I say Washington. I don't want that to be confused with the team. Eric Washington. I think everyone realizes by now we've signed a defensive coordinator that's a phenomenal line coach. So Eric Washington is who I'm referring to. Maurice Hurst is is playing phenomenally. He had a great year this year till he got injured, and it's a common theme with him. He's injured every single year with a pec injury or a bicep injury or a, a leg injury. I mean, every year he's missing significant time. So do you take a risk on him, pay him $5 million on a prove-it deal? Both these guys are still fairly young. They're still in their 20s, and they're still in you know good age 20s for the – for alignment, so there's a lot of potential with them, but do we take that risk with them? And that's something Poles will have to evaluate on the injury side, on Ken, Javon Kinlaw's potential side. But I would be very comfortable with either one of these coming in on a one-year, $5 million deal, a lot more than Justin Jones especially. I mean, Justin Jones isn't old either, 28, 29 years old. But these guys both have a ton more potential than Justin Jones do, so I would be very happy with the, if the, if we If we hear March... 11th that one of these guys is signed to the Bears I'm actually going to be very elated there's a lot of potential there and that makes me very happy for what we could be pulling off with Eric Washington and where the Bears are headed all right here's your rookie class and this is what I want to point out with this a lot of people get stuck in on the names and they get stuck in on the hype and it's the same thing with you know you've seen my other videos on other players I think are too hyped but Jerzon Newton I think is a little bit too hyped because to me this is a very average class without a phenomenal top top tier player this isn't where you have to go out of your way to get someone like Jalen Carter this doesn't have a Jalen Carter in this class now Jerzon Newton is a great athlete I'm not completely knocking him but there is a lot of work that he needs to go into his game I highlighted some guys in the middle here because what I would like to see is if if some of these guys fall for whatever reason or if they slip and there's going to be some things that come out with the the East West Shrine game and 
and with the Reese's Senior Bowl, with with players that improve and per, and impress and and show off, and and they might raise their stock a little bit here or there, but they're not going to jump from you know number sixty nine overall in the draft up to number twenty. That's that's just not how this works. And you got a whole body of work, and they've been ranked where they are for a reason now, and they might move up a little or move down a little bit. Some guys slip when it comes time to the draft. So some of these guys slip. Some of the guys I really like, as you look at those numbers I've highlighted in the middle, Brandon Dorless of Oregon is very consistent. Look at his run defense, his pass defense, and his overall grade. They're very consistent. He doesn't have a weakness on either side. He's got some improving he needs to do, but he's a very consistent player. And same with Tavondre Sweat. I really like Tavondre Sweat's game as I watch his, his film, too. So I don't I don't quite understand why he is so low. I understand that he started off the year ranked, you know, fourth, fifth round, and he's really risen quite a lot. But I think he's one of those guys that really could go in the second round if a team loves him with his size and his height. I don't know if we'd never necessarily go after him with Andrew Billings, but, you know, if Ryan Poles ends up loving him enough, you know, it d- doesn't kill us to have him and Billings, you know, rotating in with each other. So, I mean, there's a lot of options with our defensive interior. There's a lot of directions this team can go, and it's young and it's malleable. So there's different things that they could do, and I won't be shocked with anything other than signing a huge name free agent because we do have two rookies and we have so many other names. So I hear people, and it, you know, I, I threw out one of my mocks with Christian Wilkins and, you know, just for the fun of it, but really to for our money and where it needs to be expended, I don't see us spending on the defensive line. I see us drafting an edge in the first round and I see us either getting a value signing or, and, or uh, signing a value pick. So if one of these guys, if Brandon Dorless, Devondre Sweat, or even Michael Hall, if they end up going in the fourth round and that first pick of ours in the fourth round, or even the comp pick ends up lining up there and, and polls loves one of these guys, I wouldn't be shocked. And I would be actually very excited to see some more rotation come in. I just think we need a little bit of experience maybe. So, which is why I see, Maybe Kinlaw coming, getting signed and, and seeing if we can improve him a little bit with, with Eric Washington. So either way, we're in great shape on our defensive interior because of that signing, because of our new defensive coordinator. So that's a positive thing for me. I'm really excited about that. Everyone else should be too. All right, so overall, our preference, uh, value signing. I've already kind of said that. Approve it deal and hopefully work with Eric Washington and, and get the most out of them. Or an early day three pick for extreme value. You know, fourth round, number 111 overall, getting someone that we can have come in and, and pull something out of them. Because you don't expect your your day three guys to really be impact players. That's not what you're expecting. Your day, your round one and round two players, you want to be starters. You want them to be guys that, that start on your team and make an impact and, and really high-level impact players. Day three, you want those guys to start too, and you're hoping you can get some impact out of them. Day four, you're not, other than certain positions like running back um, and things like that, and day three are, are, are you know players you could have starting, like Roshan Johnson last year, day, day three pick, fourth round. That was, that was actually a really great spot for him, and I, I was excited when we picked him. So, you know, for defensive interior, though, I don't really expect, you see how, Pickens and Dexter are working out after being round two and round three guys. You know, it's it's a work in progress with these guys, but having Eric Washington is a great place for the Bears to be in with this. So, you know, all in all, we're on the up, and I like where we're headed with that. So let me know your thoughts and your comments. I think we're in a great position. I think this is a spot that won't surprise me with different things, but I do expect it to either be a value signing or a day three pick. These three guys aren't going anywhere this year. These three guys are the staple, and we'll add one more to it. Where that will happen, not sure yet. But until next time, uh, if you haven't liked, please like it. If you haven't shared, please share it. If you haven't subscribed, don't know why you haven't subscribed yet, but do that too. And until next time, bear down.